in the in the vein of keeping things um, kind of consistent and um, the the messaging and the teaching consistent between what Mike's doing and how we're talking about listings, um, I want to talk about a very related subject. Um, and we're going to kind of introduce it today, and I may continue it uh, the latter part of, of this week on Thursday, depending upon how far we get today. Um, but we're going to talk a little bit about negotiations, okay? Um, so do you, uh, so th there's, there's some experience in this room. We've got Amy, you've got, a, you've got some experience doing this. Tracy's been doing this for uh, a little while. Um, Kim, you've got You've got experience behind your back, don't you? Just with a different, different, uh, different brokerage. Am I remembering right, K Day? Yeah. Okay. So um, it, it, we know there's a lot of rules, unspoken rules, that um, govern the, what you can and can't say in negotiations. And my goal in, in um, helping you guys this week and what I wanted to teach you was, okay, let's find where those rules are written and let's talk about the rules of what you can say and what you can't say um, in a negotiations process. Guess what? Y'all familiar with this book? Look familiar? Uh, sure. Sure. That's your pre-licensed book or something very similar to it. This is the 18th edition. I can't remember what year this one came out. But I thought, you know, let's go back to the, let's go back to basics and find out what, what this book says about negotiations. Guess what? Ain't, ain't squat in there. <laughs> There's not. Um, so, uh, you know, I'm sitting here. I literally was struggling over the weekend to try to find what I wanted to, how I wanted to present this to you guys and how to do, am I the first person to ever write down what the rules of negotiations are, what you can and cannot say in the negotiations process. Um, and honestly, I think I'm, I might, I might be. <laughs> it's not that there's not rules written, it's that they're scattered in different places and you got to think about where, where to find them. Okay, so what is this all coming, you know, why, why am I bringing this up is, um, is I want to make sure that you guys are not making some of the same mistakes that I hear other agents making, that I hear other uh, brokerages making when they're calling you guys and negotiating with you. I want to make sure that you guys are acting on the best, um, uh, in the best uh, intentions and, and doing the best for your clients. Okay. So let's, let's talk about the details of this. All right. I'm going to, I'm going to, we're going to, we're going to pull up some tips. We're going to talk about some tips and then we're going to go into to some more specifics about what you can and what you cannot say in a negotiations process. All right. Is this necessary? Do you guys find this to be? Okay, good. I'm glad. I think it is too. <laughs> All right. So let me share my screen first and we're going to go through uh, a little bit of slide deck stuff. Um, and then we're going to talk maybe off script. All right. You looking at real estate negotiations, 10 tips for winning? Okay, let's run through this real quick, and then we're going to talk kind of some, some other details, all right? Tips for winning in real estate negotiations. I've got 10 tips for you, okay? The first one is never act too excited, okay? You are in this process, in, in not only in negotiations, but in, um, in the showing process, in the offer process, in all of every step of this you are engaged and motivated, but this is not your first rodeo. You never act too excited. You always want to be the calm, steady, collected voice of reason in this process. Okay. Every deal is important. However, you need to hide your emotions. Don't overshare. Sorry if I need to take this off. Don't overshare um, in an attempt to make yourself look better. Talk less and listen more oh my gosh did i just say that i did shut up and listen 
<laughs> All right. Silence is uh, often the loudest word. In between pauses of silence, the fear of losing a potential deal uh, will intimidate the person on the other side of the negotiation table. This can be leveraged to the outcome of your choice. Okay. Um, what is it that uh, your grandfather always used to tell you? He who talks first loses. Okay, so never be too excited. All right. I have been a listing agent before and I have had buyer's agents call me and the first words out of their mouths. Um, hang on a second. I want you to see my face when I'm done. The first words out of their mouths are, oh my gosh, my clients just loved this home. They think it is perfect for their needs. It meets, it checks every one of their boxes. Let's do this deal. Did, did that agent not just hand you everything you need on a silver platter? They did. Okay. Be careful. Don't overshare. All right. Are you back on the screen? Never act too excited. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, let me get to my next slide. This, I could not say it enough. Knowledge is power. Know your goals. Okay. Educate yourself on, on, you know, everything from the investors, make relationships with city planners. This is written from a bigger perspective, maybe commercial in mind, uh, but, but it, it's ab still ab absolutely applicable in this, in this uh, scenario. Um, educate yourself on zoning and uses, educate yourself on the comps, on the neighborhood, on the absorption analysis of that neighborhood. All of those things are going to help you um, when you come to it with knowledge, you can leverage all of that for your client. All right. So I have always been of the mindset um, when I've been an exclusive listing agent before, if I get an offer from anybody on my listing that I have not physically talked to and that they have not asked me about my client, what the seller wants, what the seller is trying to achieve, um, and they just submit an offer. Quite often that offer, offer tends to be tone deaf. It, they don't understand that they're, you know, that they're asking for a termite letter and all these things in an offer when I've got 12 others that all, that's clean as a whistle. Okay. Don't be tone deaf. And if you, and knowledge is the biggest part of it. You got to know what the other side wants. And so that you can try to deliver a solution <laughs> and negotiate a solution that works for whatever it is that they're trying to, whatever needs they're trying to meet. Okay. Any questions on that or any other examples? Anybody's got some good ones of. Um, I've literally just had like the busiest weekend of agents calling me because I've got two listings live and um, mm -hmm. one of them had called me and she was just like so over the top with how the family like loved the home to say what you were saying there and about how you know they've seen so many other homes but this is the only one they really want what can we what can she do for to make sure that she has the winning offer blah 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 and then I had another agent call me up on a different property and say um, you know we want to offer 325 is that going to be enough and then it was kind of like a conversation that I was like I don't even know how to have this conversation because what am I supposed to say and not supposed to say so then <laughs> So then she was like, what about, you know, okay, so what about if we offered 330? Do you have higher than 330? 340, do you have higher than 340? And it was just constantly trying to get, you know, like information out of me. So yep. yeah, that, that rings many bells. Like you just okay. Saying. So uh, let me put you on the spot, Claire, if you don't mind. Did you, did you talk specific numbers? No. Good girl. No, it was more like when she was like 315, do you have higher? And I was like, yes. But then I was kind of like, that's all that I'm going to say. I was like, no, not specific numbers. And she tried to okay. get me to because she was like, well, we're in between 325 and 327. So where should we be? And I was just like, look, just bring your best offer. That's all I can say. Thank you. <laughs> I Let me repeat after me. Okay, everybody write this down. <laughs> I encourage you to submit any offer and allow me to present any offer to the sellers you present what you think is is going to put your your client is in the best possible position it's really really simple 
Okay. And they will press you. They will ask you for numbers. They will ask you for due diligence. Do you volunteer any of that information? No. All right. So why? That's the question I want to know. Why? Who can answer it for me? Why do we never give specific numbers or, um, you know, one would could say, well, wait a minute, Claire, you, you had, you had somebody that was asking you for a specific number. What, you know, what if you want, you gave them the highest, the higher of those numbers, are you not doing your client a service by giving them that high number? No, I think it's more of a disservice. How so? Why? Because it's kind of like, if they could, I could say, oh yeah, we've had an offer for 327, but then she might have been wanting to give 340. And Thank then if you. I say 327, she's like, oh great, we're going to 329 then. And I could have just missed out on a 340. Amy, was that what you were going to say? You were itching. I was, I was, I was like, say it. Exactly. It's, That's it's, exactly it. It's putting your client in a vulnerable kind of cheating them already. Yeah, I mean, if you gave a number and you thought, well, that number's still better than the last one they were given, but what if they were thinking of one that was $10,000 higher? You've just taken $10,000 out of your client's pocket, not to mention yours, okay? Not that that's the main factor, but it's also yours. It's out of your pocket. All right. Um, Jay, yeah, Jay, I got go a ahead. question on that. So. Um, you say don't give that, but my question is, can you give the information like, Hey, uh, like, do you have any offers over 320? You could be like, yeah, I have a few offers over that. And like, just don't give them a the number. Like my question is you don't like in order not to waste the buyer's agent time either. Right. Cause if you're already at like 315 and their limits 310 and you might just tell them it's not worth it. Right. To like say, Hey, or do you say, Hey, put all offers. And I don't, I'm just wondering, cause like if you already have, like, let's say 10 offers, 315 to 330, do you accept, like, if someone comes to you and says, hey, my clients love it, 310 is the highest they can offer, what do you do as a listing agent? Just say, please submit it? What, what did we write down on the piece of paper, everybody? <laughs> I encourage you to present all okay. offers. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Even if it is one that is not competitive, it's a place to start from. But if you, as the, as the, the listing agent, say, ah, nah, don't, don't bother submitting, you, you never know where that offer could lead to and where just where they're starting from or, you know, yeah, they say that they're at the top of their cap, but you never actually ever want to do anything to discourage any agent or um, buyer from submitting an offer. Always, always, always go with it. Yeah. Okay. okay. All right, um, I'm going to get through and then we're going to come back and we're going to talk some more details here in just a second. All right, so knowledge is power. Know, your, know what the goals are. Um, trust should be earned, not loss. This is a very basic concept, but it, it, it should not be um, overstated. Never lies. Lies will always be discovered and um, you will be held responsible. Don't sound, uh, doesn't sound like a good time. It's not, I agree. Um, so in other words, never say I've got three other offers when you don't have three other offers. Never say my client can go up, up to X, but they're, you know, or whatever. Just don't fabricate, don't exaggerate a number um, don't tell somebody you have offers when you don't, if you are, are discovered in that it is a slippery slope and your career will suffer as a result in, in the long run, it's just always better to be a straight player. Okay. I've always been of the mindset. I, uh, was raised in, a uh, you know, uh, military environment, went to a military academy, Practice the uh, the honor code. I will not lie, steal, or cheat, or tolerate anyone among us that does. Okay, it applies in this situation also. Okay, if possible, make the other side think that they're leading the show. Um, let them express their ideas that 
that are ones that are coming to fruition. The person on the other side of the negotiation table should feel comfortable at all times. It's natural for someone to believe that they are in control of the situation, making them making it more comfortable for them. Use affirmative language that will leave the ball in their court. That's good, good advice, good general advice. Okay. This is key. <laughs> Don't act like it's your last deal. And I would go one step further. Also, don't act like this is your first deal either. All right. Especially for the, for the audience in, in this, you know, being relatively new agents or uh, new to Century 21. Um, they act like the deal in front of them is their last deal of their lives. Don't go into a transaction with this mentality. The negotiation table is not a battleground. Um, humility and empathy should never be taken for granted. I love some of these. It's, it's like a, uh, just a general statement, but it really applies to uh, just a good moral, moral character individual. Um, if you're being a hard-nosed player, you're going to be met with that exact same thing coming from the other side. All right. Negotiations is finding about is 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 the process of going about finding a win win situation. You want everybody to feel like they're getting something out of the deal, um, and that's why there are certain there are certain personality types, and and in some cases there are cultural differences that that govern this. But some people feel like I, I can't feel like I'm winning unless you are in pain in the negotiation process. I've never subscribed to that point of view, and I, and I and I don't appreciate it when others do. Does anybody agree with me on that one? <laughs> I'm just not of the mindset of those that are like I, I I'm only winning if you are 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 crying in your bowl of cereal in the morning. Okay. <laughs> All right, let the other party speak first. Um, again, going right back to the, I think the second one was uh, talk less, uh, listen more. Let them first, at, you know, the first one to speak is the one that, that ends up losing. Let them speak. Okay, stay quiet. Let the other side speak first, navigate from there. Once everything is on the table, on the table express your figure. You can let, it, let them know by, let it, I'm sorry folks. You can set it lower by knowing that the potential ground will be in this negotiation. You are already ahead of the game. Okay. I'm going to give you some, some real world practical tips, just like the other one I made you write down earlier that, to deal with that in just a second. Understand um, real estate market dynamics. If you're acting as a negotiator, then you should know the climate of the current market. Um, sometimes it, Somebody will come to you and their, their justification for their price may be only one transaction or uh, one comparable. That's not sufficient to drive the price, um, you know, necessarily to where they're at. All right. Um, you should know the factors that are elevating or deflating property prices in your market in, your, in the time frame. Um, a new roof is a value add. An old roof is a loss. Basic knowledge of the current real estate dynamic uh, climate will help you do wonders and doing an effective CMA to be able to determine what, what the agent was thinking when they priced the home um, is, is some, uh, sometimes a challenge and you got to ask the right questions. What are the right questions since we're talking about that? Let's talk about practical application of this. Okay, you get a you you see a listing. Your client's interested in the listing. Um, how do you ask the question about pricing? Any good techniques anybody's learned? I'll give you one. Okay, um, is. Uh, you know, the house is listed for 350. My CMA thinks it's at 325. Um, I call up the listing agent and I say, hey, we're, we're interested in the property. We'd like to see if we can get disclosures from you. Um, expressing your interest, but at the same time, you kind of put them on the defensive maybe a little bit or ask the question about pricing by going, hey, I'm, uh, you know, uh, I've done a, 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 a brief CMA um, and 
at least on my initial look, I'm having a hard time justifying where you're at at 325. Um, can you tell me what comps you used or um, did you guys do a pre-listing CMA to help determine the price that you listed the home at? What does that do to them? It immediately puts them on the defensive. Amy, you're smiling. Do you well, use that one? You and I know that's an issue that I have on the other side. Of this. <laughs> so I'm actually waiting for the, uh, well, I'll put it to you guys this way. We did a pre-listing appraisal and um, the listing price is incredibly over that. Okay. So I would love the information on it will put me on the defense greatly how to um, protect my clients in that okay. process. Okay, let's, we're, we're gonna have to talk about that one because I know your situation and we're gonna, we'll, we'll have to talk offline. That's a whole, that's a whole different topic for, for everybody, <laughs> but it's, it's, it'll, it'll be good and we can learn from this. Maybe we'll use this as an after action, okay, Amy? All right. Um, all right. So, um, did everybody get that one? A way to ask the client, uh, ask the the listing agent about how they arrived at their sales price. It's a simple question, and it's part of knowledge is power. The more you know about what they were thinking about when they came with that price. Um, I've had agents that have responded to that question that I've asked them, how did you arrive at your sales price with, it's not my number, it's my seller's number, <laughs> okay? I've also had, and, and is that client, is that listing agent, is, are they doing their job? Yeah, good point. They literally just betrayed their, their client's interest by saying, it's not my number, it's theirs, but it happens all the time. Okay, so be careful what you say and how you say it. All right, all right, back on to sharing my screen again. Share, we made it to uh, listing or the number seven here. Um, let's talk about number eight of 10. Um, if I can ever get it to change, there we go. Uh, this is this is a little bit on the advanced side, but you might want to make a list of the, the techniques that you've used and how well that they have worked. And then you can always refer back to that. Um, it's not a bad idea. Have I ever done it? Can't say as I have. <laughs> okay. Tips to winning in real estate negotiations. Again, friction and no are underestimated. Make those two words your friend. Um, it's okay uh, to, 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 to use the word no. Um, it's actually it's to your advantage. There is power of no and there's power in, in creating friction. Use sensibly, they can help you tremendously. Um, so saying no at the right time during the deal can be extremely persuasive to another person. They might get nervous and they won't be able to offer a win-win situation or perhaps they are under financial constraints. Don't be afraid to walk away. And if it's a bluff, the power uh, of no can, can help lead you to the bottom line. And then we've already said this one, know the other party, study what their goals are. I mean, I have uh, the, the best advice I've ever received, I think, in this industry is when I'm preparing an offer is I call up the listing agent and say, tell me about your sellers. Um, other than the obvious, and the obvious is the net to seller. What are your clients looking for? What are the sellers looking for? Um, and, and you ask the, the listing agent, what are they looking for? And tell me, how can I write you a winning offer? Okay. So they're, you're literally asking for them, them to, to list the terms. Um, so oftentimes you'll get, they will give you the keys to the kingdom on occasion. They'll tell you exactly what you need. They'll tell you they need 60 days of post-closing possession. They need... Um, they need a week to move out. They need to close on this date, but stay until X date. 
um, whatever the case may be, they will give you the, quite often the keys to the kingdom. All right. Now, you're the listing agent. You're on the other side of this transaction. You're Amy, who's being asked these questions. What's an appropriate hey. response? Hi, buddy. Ready? You're muted, Iris. I'm gonna. Un I'm gonna. Mute. There you go. Or you're unmuted, Iris. Oh, sorry. That's all right. Go ahead. Who? Uh, I asked a question. Who was gonna answer it for me? I can't remember. You're on the other side of this transaction. So you're saying we're still the listing agent? Yeah. It's, as a listing agent, how do you respond to somebody that says those things? Well, I had said that um, somebody had called me up and literally asked me all the questions about what my seller wanted, which was one of the first ones that I had, first best conversations that I'd had because the other ones were just all about their buyers. Um, so this one had called me up and said, you know, what's really important to your seller? And basically I'd said it's exactly what's written in the listing is it's very important for her to be able to stay in that property for 60 days. Um, I said, that's literally all that she's asking and all that she's looking for. Yeah. So, but I, I reiterated the fact that it's in the listing, you know, because like if you read the listing, you'll see that that's part of our terms. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But what if I came to you, Claire, and I said, okay, well, I, I come in at 310, I'll give you 60 days. You know, I, I'm going to be like Jay. So I came to you and I'm like, all right, Claire, I have 310, 60 days. Am I good? You're going to give me the house? Well, no, because that's not my decision to make. It's the seller's. Uh, all right. Well, Claire, I mean, am I, that's, that's good too. Yeah. But, uh, but it, within, when it comes to on the money, that's not something that I would discuss. I can't, I can't give away what what the price is or what, you know, what my other offers are. But I would just say, submit your offer and I'll pass it to the seller. It's their decision at the end of the day. Okay. So, I mean, her, her answer much that might be, um, you know, whatever's here's, here's a good general, uh, general response to that. Um, what is offer, what the offer that is going to win is going to be the one that offers my client the most net with the least amount of risk. I mean, isn't that what every single yeah. offer that we write that we're, that the goal is trying to offer the most net with the least amount of risk. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what that looks like is up to the, the, the buyer's agent to decide. Okay. You never want to give anything away. You never want to tell them, well, I have others that have five days of due diligence. I never, I have another one that has three days of due diligence. If they're asking you for very, very um, drilled specifics, here is an appropriate response. Okay. If you, if they're asking you to nail down a number, don't let, don't let yourself be nailed down to a number. Okay. If they're asking you to be, um, nail you down to 2% or 3% over asking, don't allow yourself to be nailed down to a number. Okay. Here is a great way to handle this. All right. Without talking specific numbers about your situation, let's compare it to, okay. When we listed the home, we price the home appropriate to the other comparables in the area. The other comparables in the area sold on average between three days, five days, whatever. Um, and what we saw is the sales ended up being 103 to 104% of the asking price. The seller is approaching this um, with, with, you know, an expectation fairly close to that. Okay. Did you ever, did you just, did you reveal anything about this, a specific number that you have? You did not, but yet you still conveyed the message of what the expectation might be by generally speaking about it in terms of what is going on in that market, in that neighborhood, in that price point. Okay. That's really good. I like that one. So tie it back to the market, tie it back to your CMA that you did when you listed the home, tie it back to the comparables and use that as the framework for your conversation about specific amounts. Don't allow yourself to get pulled in, but if you have to give something away, give it in a very general, broad terminology, i.e. the use of, hey, the comparables that we saw in the neighborhood were going for X, Y, and Z. Okay. 
Good information? Okay. Um, and one of the reasons why it's hard to find written rules about specifics about this is negotiations and um, it's not necessarily governed by uh, by written rules through much of anything with the exception of this. Does everybody recognize this? It's the code of ethics and the code of ethics and, and the standards of practice associated with the ethics are why we never talk specific numbers because th this, the code of ethics is what talks about your duties to your client. And one of your duties to your client is never revealing specific numbers. Okay. So that's where, where the, the foundational legal basis of our conversations um, and why we never give specifics. All right. I have taken over three minutes additional of your time. Any last minute questions, alibis? Got a minute? Appreciate the interaction today. Thank you for your, uh, for your, uh, the, the little repartee we had going on there. I like it. <laughs> yeah, thanks, Guggen. Thanks, <laughs> I, 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 have a, I have a question um, really quickly. When you, when you talk in the first, the first rule, about not being like, oh my client loves it how do you balance that with you know the people who are wanting uh, writing letters and you know this would be perfect for me and my family and all of that so the the letters are a good tool they are an effective tool um some have made the argument that they may um that they may be in violation of the fair housing um, rules and regulations because if you include a photograph, there may they you know somebody may use that information to discriminate based off of a protected class, whether they're you know what their skin color is or um, you know their race or or origin, national origin, anything along those lines. Um, familial status because it's two ladies and and a child standing in the picture. Uh, I, I'm, I'm not going to weigh on in it. I don't, I, I don't have a strong feeling one way or the other. Have I used them before? Yes. Have, are they an effective tool? Yes. Could somebody make the argument? Yeah, they probably could. Um, but um, so that's not you communicating that information to your client. It's presenting the information that has been presented to you along with the offer. So um, there's some, something to be said here for also consistency is if you do something for one of the 10 offers that you got, you got to do it for all of them. If you tell one of your um, offers that has been particularly persistent and you end up telling them, well, no, I've got another one that's five days of due diligence. Theoretically, you should go back to the other five offers that you've got and tell everybody that you've got five days of due diligence on the shortest amount of due diligence you've got is five days. Does that make sense? Okay. Uh, yeah, I guess I'm asking though, in that case, people are saying this would be perfect for my client. And I heard you when you said that's what we don't want to do in the negotiations. So I guess I'm just trying to figure out where do you draw the line when you're saying, Yes, this is perfect for these people who really want the house versus what you said. You're never going to say because that puts you in a bad negotiating position. So I'm just trying to figure out how that how you balance that. Well, the, the difference is, is it's not you conveying that information to the listing agent. It's the buyers conveying that information to the seller. It's different. The buyer and the seller can interact in a number of different ways and they can make it known, but it's, but it's the difference between them making it known and you and their agent making those, those, that information known. Great. That's a good point. Thank you. Thank you, Tippy. Appreciate your, your insightful question. All right. Thank you, everybody. Have a great week. I'm here all week. Um, do me a favor, go to the, um, the coaching calendar. If you're not on my calendar for this week, go reserve a spot now. Okay. Thanks, Jay. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank Have a great you. week.